Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute discounted cash flows, assuming that the cash flow happens on a quarterly basis and then assuming that the cash flow happens in the middle of a year. So let's assume you have the scenario here, initial investment of $7,000 and annual cash flow of $2,100 and a cost of capital of 12% over a five year time horizon. So in year zero, you have a an outgoing cash flow of $7,000 and years one through five, you have incoming cash flows of $2,100. Now the net present value of this is the initial cash flow plus um, the NPV formula applied to this annual interest rate and these annual cash flows. So you have a net present value of $570 for this set of cash flows. But what if your cash flows happen on a quarterly basis? So the first thing is now your annual cash flow of $2,100 is now split into four different quarterly cash flows. So the quarterly cash flow is this by four, which is $525. The next thing that happens is you need to adjust your quarterly cost of capital. So it's not 12%, but it, it's some other figure called, let's say just, let's just call it Q for quarterly, right? How do you compute Q? So let's say you have say a hundred dollars that you want to invest at the start of a year and you want to get this 12% interest rate. So at the end of the year, you will have a hundred times one plus 12%. Now, what if you had the same $100 and you wanted to invest that at a quarterly interest rate of Q percent? So you would have quarterly compounding. So at the end of the first quarter, you'd get 100 times 1 plus Q. At the second quarter, you'd get 100 times 1 plus Q times 1 plus Q and so on until the end of the fourth quarter. So you basically have 100 times 1 plus Q raised to the power 4. If you want this figure to be equal to this figure, you equate these two. And then what you do is you find out the value of Q. The value of Q is so 100 and 100 go away. So you have 1 plus 12 percent raised to the power one by four because it's raised to the power four here. So if you you know find the fourth root of both, then it becomes raised to the power one by four minus one. So that is the formula for Q. So that is the equivalent quarterly interest rate that results in the same payment as your annual interest rate of 12%. So I'm just going to apply this formula here. One plus b3 raised to the power 1 by 4 minus 1 so 0 0.02874 i'm going to make it a percentage and have some decimals here and i can now delete all this or or maybe i'll just preserve it here for your reference i'm just going to put a few more spaces here now that we have the quarterly cash flows and the quarterly cost of capital. Quarterly COC. I'm just going to say quarters and cash flow. Quarter zero, the same thing as this cash flow here. Quarters one, two, three, and so on. Instead of typing these, what I'll do is I'll type in just one here. I'll go to home within that editing, within that fill, click on fill, click on series. And I want my series in columns. I want the step value to be one and the stop value to be 20. And because there are 20 quarters in five years and click OK. And if you do that, it'll just fill up all the way till 20. And my quarterly cash flow is this here. And before you copy this by dragging the fill handle, make sure to um, edit the formula so that it has absolute cell referencing. Now double click on the bottom right 
fill handle to copy this cash flow all the way down. Let's compute the NPV for quarter. So I'm just going to rename this as NPV for annual. And here I'll call it NPV for quarter, quarterly NPV. So the cash flow is the initial plus NPV of at this interest rate, all these cash flows. And that amount is $903. So you can see it does matter what you assume about when the cash flows come. If you assume the cash flows are annual once a year at the end of the year, that's uh, one net present value. If you assume those exact same cash flows happen on a quarterly basis, there's a higher net present value because here you're assuming you're getting money earlier. So you're getting here, you're getting $2,100 at the end of the year. Here you're getting only $525 at the end, but you're getting three fourths of that amount uh, of, of the total annual cash flows before that. So because you're getting money, more money upfront, the cash flows in the quarterly case are higher. Now we'll take a look at a third case. That is, what if we want to assume that these cash flows happen on a mid-yearly basis? I'm going to demonstrate another way to arrive at this net present value here. So let me just make some room here. Insert present values, EOY. And EOY stands for end of year. So the present value for end of year assumption is that um, the present value of $2,100 uh, received at the end of year one is nothing but that amount divided by one plus uh, the discount rate raised to the power of one. And I will just press F4 for the B3. And I'll copy this all the way down. So the present value for $2,100 received at the end of year two today is 1,674 and so on. And if I add up all of this, Actually, I'll just, for the sake of completeness, I'll just put this here. And if I just add up all these, I will get exactly this value. So this is another way to compute the net present value. You just compute the present values of each of these cash flows and add it all up. So now I will do PV of, uh, instead of end of year, I'll, I'll say mid year, MY. So present value, assuming cash flows happen mid-year instead of or MOY, just to be uh, consistent. So here we have the initial cash flows and here now you have 2100 divided by one plus your cost of capital raised to the power one minus 0 0.5. And the 0 0.5 accounts for the fact that you're assuming these cash flows appear at the middle of the year and I will press F2 and go to B3 and press F4 for absolute cell referencing. And if you drag this all the way down, you get these different set of cash flows. And if you add these up, you get a different figure. So if you assume cash flows happen in the middle of the year, you get this. So these are you know different ways to look at the cash flows of a project, you could assume a finer grained set of cash flows quarterly instead of annual, and that'll give you one figure. Or you could assume these cash flows happen in the middle of the year, and that'll give you another figure. So hopefully all these different ways of measuring the cash flows of a project will give you a more realistic view of what to expect uh, about the net present value of your project. And I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.